Everyone has directly experienced the cognitive decline of a family member, whether it's your grandparents, parents, brothers, sisters. It's one of the worst things to ever happen. On the lesser end, someone having memory issues, forgetting conversations they had mere days ago, to extreme circumstances of violent behavior and not knowing who they are. In August of 2019, about a year and a half ago, I posted a vlog where I visited my grandmother's doctor to ask him to take her off certain medications I believed, I knew, were contributing to her cognitive decline. I warned my mother that my grandma wasn't going to be around too much longer taking that medication in that environment following that diet. My mother brushed it off, so did my aunts and uncles. Now, unfortunately, my prediction came true and my grandmother needs 24-7 care, so hopefully I can help someone willing to listen and their loved one can enjoy many more years of their life. So these five are elements that I've gone over in past videos, especially uh, the six basics of health. Today, specifically, we're going to apply them minimally, invasively, to an elderly person's lifestyle. Number one, most importantly, get them off any prescribed medications, notably statins. This requires an understanding of the drug, what it does. And most people just listen to everything the doctor says as gospel, as opposed to researching it on their own. You know, back around that same time a year and a half ago, I made a video titled, Statins Explained in Five Minutes. If you want the detailed explanation about what they do, check out that video. The simplification is that statins kill your brain cells by inhibiting the body's ability to utilize cholesterol, which is a necessary cell nutrient. But this isn't limited to statins. Many medications, as well as chemicals, pollutants, additives in those medications contribute to cognitive decline. Another video I did was on allergy medications such as Benadryl, which most people think is harmless, causing memory loss. You know, millions and millions of people taking these harmless over-the-counter drugs. You have antidepressants, antipsychotics, anti-Parkinson's, bladder medications, epilepsy, you know, I think probably what, 50, 70, how many millions and millions and millions of Americans are taking these medications without understanding the true negatives. Second, we want to reduce Wi-Fi exposure. And this is more of a minimally invasive solution as opposed to a complete lifestyle fix. I was watching a video on the Greek island Icaria the other day and they all live to like 100 years old. Clean air, clean food, clean water, low radiation levels. If you can get the person to wear protective clothing, which is what I wear all day, every day, Wi-Fi shielding.com, t-shirt and underwear particularly, and then sleep in a bed canopy to protect their head, brain function, recovery. They shouldn't have to change too many lifestyle factors, although, you know, it's maybe 60, 70% of the way there. This will significantly reduce the oxidative damage being caused to their brain and organs by various sources of radio frequency radiation. I have a whole playlist of many, many hours if you want more details, uh, which may apply to your specific circumstance. Third is to increase protein consumption. Uh, my grandma actually got a hold of some of the best bars that we make on Frankie's Free Range Foods, uh, which have whey protein in them, uh, but they actually kind of taste like cake. Uh, my uncle stopped by the warehouse and I gave him some to try, but he actually ended up visiting my grandma and she wasn't eating anything, but she ate those, which brings us to elderly people overconsuming sweets, baked goods, and junk food. Protein is high in B vitamins, which is crucial, the most important nutrient arguably for brain function. Whey protein in particular happens to be a concentrated source of B vitamins because it's like drinking a cup of milk in one or two spoons of powder. I mean, if you look at the diet of any elderly person, they are lacking animal protein. And even if you do include it in their diet, because of the radiation in the environment, you know, their organs might not be able to digest the food, so you might have to include protein digesting enzymes such as pepsin, trypsin, and chymotrypsin. Uh, but the dairy, the whey protein, especially grass-fed from a local farm, is an approachable way for someone that isn't too keen on eating meat. You, know, you could even make cookies and various baked goods and sweets that do have, or even just making cookies with protein powder is a great way to get an elderly person with a sweet tooth 
to get those B vitamins for their brain, which ties directly to number four, balancing the omega-3 to omega-6 ratios in the diet. As we spoke about that Greek island earlier, you know, this is a matter of minimally invasive changes to a person's lifestyle diet, not an entire revamp that will not stick. Yeah, yeah, there might be an elderly person that does enjoy eating scrambled brains and eggs. I mean, but that person probably doesn't have brain issues. High omega-6, particularly linoleic acid contained in seed oils, soybean, canola, is very high in those baked goods, those processed foods, causes massive amounts of oxidative stress, makes the cholesterol molecules in your body inflamed. It's the single most damaging thing you can consume outside of direct toxins and pollutants on a cellular level. And it counteracts you know, some very important nutrients needed for brain function, the omega-3 fatty acids. As we get older, you know, the body has a harder time with basic metabolic functions. You know, so the more we're able to remove the negatives and include the positives, there is less margin of error for disease. In this case, eliminating the oxidative damage from omega-6 and adding omega-3 so our body isn't stressed to synthesize it. The omega-6 is inhibiting our body's natural ability to make omega-3 from other fatty acids, and by lacking omega-3 in the diet, it's just too many negatives and not enough positives. Number five is grounding. We are made of energy, our body contains electrons, which are negatively charged particles that carry energy. Free radicals, which cause oxidative stress, have an uneven number of electrons, and we can't remove those easily from our body. Humans are meant to be in direct contact with the earth through natural materials. Barefoot on the ground, leather moccasins, touching a tree. Your body will discharge excess electrons into the earth and you become neutral. When you're disconnected, like I am right now on the second floor of my house, you build up electrons, it causes more oxidative damage. For an elderly person, you know, this can mean taking a walk on a natural trail, you know, simply grounding their bed sheet or whatever. And I think if you even look it up, they have grounded hospital beds. And when I had jaw surgery, they actually put me in a room with lead walls. So these doctors, these people higher up, know very well about certain secrets. It's just who they use them on. I guess they have to like them or they have to have connections. I don't know. I've done videos on grounding. Um, the bed canopy that I have on Wi-Fi shielding is actually grounded. And I also have uh, grounding straps available on the website that you can just put on your sneakers or regular shoes. So when you go hiking, you don't need you know, some type of expensive natural leather footwear. From that minimally invasive perspective, educate them and their family on the medications they use. Get them a bed canopy, reduce their cell phone usage, turn off Wi-Fi devices if possible, add some whey protein to a milkshake, their ice cream, their baked goods, get them to have steak a couple nights a week, homemade instead of processed foods, add fish a few times per month, that will both reduce the omega-6 and increase the omega-3, take them walking at least once per week, or you know, ground um, radiators, copper pipes in houses, uh, but you know, if you're in that city environment, it can make it difficult to do that. That's why I've done several different videos explaining all of these in depth because there are nuances you need to know. And one thing I didn't touch on was like pollutants like aluminum and deodorant or cooking uh, devices. There really is so much that you need to do, but you know, if you watch my YouTube channel, if you go through my videos, if you have a good understanding of health and lifestyle, you can notice and pinpoint glaring issues. So thank you guys for joining me today.